Thank you. My name is Hunter Mentum with WorldPay. I am a VP of National Sales. And uh, specifically, I just want to take a few, walk you through a few slides on just introducing WorldPay. And, um, and really, probably just take five or ten minutes. Go ahead and flip, flip slide. Um, so in introducing WorldPay, uh, we are a payment processor. So we have a, a position globally about third largest uh, in the world payment processing. All we do is payment processing. We don't do any issuing or treasury management or banking services. Uh, WorldPay specifically uh, focuses on several segments. We'll go there in a second, but we're number one e-commerce provider uh, in the world. Um, got about 4,100 employees. Uh, and here in the States, we got about 1,400 based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Our corporate office is in the UK, in London. And uh, just a kind of a quick high-level overview. From a system perspective, um, I, I want to kind of make it clear how we've separated ourselves in the industry. So WorldPay, being the th we're the third largest non-bank owned acquirer in the country. And what that means is, is we've built a, from 1994 up, basically the same platform for payment processing. We've got two data centers in Atlanta and Philadelphia, both uh, redundant data architecture, uh, always on, hot, hot. And from a capacity perspective, we run at about 20% capacity. If we loaded all the transactions uh, into one uh, uh, completed, it'd be about 20% capacity. But the the our ability here is that we've created a platform that you can process pretty much any type of payment here in the states. Uh, we'll go through that here in a second. In in an omni-channel type of mode. So if we want to process point of sale, mobile, um, over the phone, catalog, internet. Uh, retail, grocery, petroleum, pretty much if you can think about how we process, how you can process a payment, um, that's what we focus on. Um, then we talk about segments, and so the other thing that separates WorldPay right now is we've, we've gone into uh, several segments and gone very deep. So we're owned by Bain and Advent Private Equity, and they've allowed us to build some expertise and some infrastructure in grocery and petrol. Um, and really go deep, and I, when I mean deep, I mean an integration. So integrating to the multiple different types of systems that allow us to process in these segments. Um, as well as e-commerce uh, and car dot present, uh, grocery, um, which I already mentioned, retail restaurant. On the e-commerce side, um, it's really interesting. So we're processing for companies like Netflix and Uber inside mobile apps for processing for recurrent payments. and. And a lot of different uh, technologies and integrations uh, we process. We're the one of three processors for the IRS, for example. And so what that allows us to do, again, is, is put everything from a sales team, uh, implementation, boarding, uh, solution architects, and account management and executive client management per segment. So every segment we focus on has that, that line of infrastructure. And lucky for us today, I've taken 60 slides down to seven, so we'll kind of keep it, keep it nice and short for you. From a payments perspective, so what type of payments do we provide? So your, your basic, when, we, when I say payments, uh, your Visa, MasterCard, and Amex Discover, um, if you're in fleet, you're able to do fueling and different things like that. But uh, PayPal, um, ACH, direct debit. And then when you look at online specifically, you know, there's reoccurring payments, there's store profile, uh, we do, we have another 20 slides on tokenization, encryption, PCI compliance, EMV, all those kind of things. But just from a payment perspective, um, it's all we do. So I'm happy to have very detailed conversations one-on-one -on -one or after the fact around some of the things we do there specifically and how it relates to the alpha platform and how we can integrate and support uh, different gateways and things like that. So speaking of which. so. Just a really short list. So we've got different gateways we integrate with. And so obviously, when the, we have the Alpha platform, if there is an authorized net gateway or cyber source gateway uh, on top of that, if there's shift forward and other gateways you see on there. Um, or you might, if you have a shopping cart involved, I've got a separate list of, long list of shopping carts that we support and things like that. So, so that way, you know, part of our role and part of our goal in, in our national group is to be a consultant and sit down with, um, uh, from a development perspective, as well as uh, just sitting down and making sure you got the right infrastructure in place. Do you have end, -end, -end encryption? Do you have point-to-point -point encryption? You know, how are you uh, approaching PCI compliance as a company? Um, are you ready for EMV, which is uh, Europe Pay MasterCard Visa uh, liability shift in October of 2015? 
those type of things. So we try and take a very consultative approach around payments uh, and, and supporting Alpha specifically. We're very excited because since we don't um, build mobile, um, mobile platforms, we don't build uh, these type of ecosystems, we need partners. So when I have a national account that says, hey, who do you know? <laughs> I want to be able to say, well, we've got, we've got one partner that specifically addresses this, and it's Alpha, and here's how they do it. And so, and so it's a really great partnership from WorldPay's perspective. We look forward to supporting you. If you have any questions specifically, happy to address those, but just want to walk through a couple slides on introducing WorldPay. So thank you. Hunter, can I grab that? Uh, Super. <laughs> and uh, yeah. just keep this Absolutely. Thanks so much. The reason why I'm up here is uh, <clears throat> Stan standing between these two. Uh, I'm an alpha developer, as you guys know, tra a trainer as well, but I've integrated the WorldPay app. The great thing about it, and I, I want to make sure that you guys, uh, as developers, understand the value of what you have with this partnership that's been created between Alpha and WorldPay, and that is it's integrated into the app. It's already there. You don't have to go write it. It's there. And Bob's going to uh, step us through that. But I want to tell you, from a developer, one of the things that is very important to me, and I want to just reaffirm to you, what I think should be very important to you is the fact that this is how are you going to be supported on the back end of this. And I want to tell you, WorldPay has been, a, I'm implementing a huge, huge, huge app. It'll be a 10 million user app right now. <clears throat> and uh, it is, uh, it, WorldPay is a, has been the payment processor on the back side. We're not working through the seven different layers of transaction management folks. We're at the top with WorldPay. They actually process the transaction. And their customer support has been phenomenal absolutely a blessing for a developer so just want to take two minutes to let you know my experience with that has just been a plus and uh, we give a few minutes for Bob to transmit transition in here and show you how this uh, class works Okay, can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, can we hold the questions till I get done? That'd be great. Um, okay, so uh, what happened here was uh, WorldPay um, came across this awesome application, and so we needed to implement their, uh, their API in order to, uh, to pull this all together, and we realized just how important this thing really was. So, um, what I did was um, I created a new, uh, uh, there's a new XBasic class. And this supports uh, 44 methods uh, the, uh, that are the documented methods of their um, SOAP API. And uh, you can see all the different uh, types of transactions that it supports, you know, credit cards, gift cards, stored profiles, uh, debit cards, ACH transactions, check 21s. Uh, recurring records, third-party check processing. Um, these are the methods that are parts of that class. It's, this is really, really simple to work with. You instantiate the, uh, uh, you know, an object. I'll show you how to do that. And then you just start calling methods on it. You provide uh, dot variables. So, you know, you pass in, like, uh, you know, the uh, ID of the uh, stored profile and then the amount you want to charge, or, or, you know, stuff like that. It's just all done with dot variables. It's really, really simple. And uh, the other thing I did was I made sure that what um, every single method has got very specific um, variables that you can pass into it. And what I did was I f I'm filtering. Uh, so anytime you submit stuff, you could submit anything you want in that dot variable. If it's not a valid submission, maybe it belongs in, in, the, in the credit post rather than the sale post, I'll just filter it out. So it won't corrupt anything. Um, and uh, I went through every single one of these methods and did that. So it's, it's, it's really clean. It's industrial strength. And you can feel confident in the implementation. And Max is using it right now, actually, in, in his thing. So uh, this is the credit, these are all the methods of the credit card transactions. Uh, this, these are all the methods of the gift card. I'll just go through these really quick so you can see, you know, these are all the methods. And then I'm going to show you just some quick uh, code and um, just 
transition back to Windows here, and uh, let's go ahead and what happened to Windows? Oh, I just minimized it. I don't use PowerPoint much. Okay, um, let's see here. So, um, what we're going to do is we're just going to look at a, a simple uh, a script that I wrote. Uh, this is not documented yet uh, because this is just hot off the press. It's just really recently completed. Um, but what we're going to go ahead and do is, um, so we're going to go ahead and set up a. Uh, uh, you can see I'm dimming CR as a call result. I dim PSP. I start passing in my uh, my di different uh, parameters, all of the, these different dot variables. And notice I'm, you know, sometimes I'm throwing in like p.history ID. Well, that doesn't have anything to do with a credit card sale, but I can go ahead and do that. It'll just filter it out if it's not required in that particular method. So I just pass in. This is all just test data that we're using, and. Um, Let's see. Uh, yeah, right here. This is where I instantiate the WP object, and you can see I'm calling the uh, the, the namespace WorldPay API, and I'm calling the SOAP actions class. So we instantiate that, and uh, now I can start working with uh, WP. Now, notice down below uh, where I start putting in like customized fields, and then uh, also like a bill address. Well, a bill address is an object in WorldPay, and it's in the WorldPay namespace. So I have to make sure to create these objects. Um, you know, think of it like JSON with an embedded object, because that's kind of what it is. So, um, so here, you know, to build, uh, say, exact, uh, like a bill address, you know, we, we instantiate it with a uh, uh, new, with the WorldPay uh, namespace calling the address. I'll document all this so you guys know how to, how to do it. But there's probably 10 of these different um, uh, world pay uh, in, uh, objects that, that you need to know about and work with when you do this. But you can see it's pretty darn simple. Um, and then this is, this is how you actually call it. You know, the, the uh, call result is going to be, you know, wp.process credit card sale. Pass in P and you're good to go. And you can see underneath it, these are all some other tests that I did, you know, to process a credit card authorization or to reverse something out or a credit or, or whatever. So we'll just go ahead and run this really quickly. And we'll open this up in the debugger. And you can see the call result that came back. So the uh, return data value is right here. And this, this is everything that just came back from, uh, and that, that was live. This isn't, this isn't fake. <laughs> so we made a call. And uh, so now we've got a, a credit card sale, we got a history ID, we got the last four digits of the number, we got the order ID, it's an AMX card, it was approved. There, the total amount comes back with this, you'll see this weird number, it's 3.97, blah, blah, blah. It's really 398, but um, there's a rounding error that goes on when it comes back to us. So you just round it up and you're, and you're good to go. But what goes to WorldPay is A-OK. -okay. So, uh, that's how that works. So um, we're really excited about this. We think it's going to make it really, really easy for you guys to uh, build um, some some really great apps that work with 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 WorldPay. And uh, you know, we think the uh, you know, ultimately the uh, the demand is there. You know, people want to be able to do this stuff, and, and large companies want to do it too. So one thing that we didn't touch base on, and uh, <clears throat> very important to you as a developer, is all of this credit information is not in your database. So we're going to, on recurring transactions, or, or if you have a store that you're going to store two or three credit profiles, all that's kept up in WorldPay's vault. And you will, you'll get a key user profile ID that you can use to ding charges against. Maybe they have an Amex, a, a debit card, and a credit card on file. So all that is out of your database. It's no risk to you. And you, when you need it, you simply make a secure a uh, restful call and comes back and uh, and you have it for the time you need it and no more. So it eliminates a lot of risk. I wanted to show you the uh, documentation on the uh, WorldPay. Um, this is the SOAP integration guide, but in here are all the different methods. 
So, um, and, and um, you know, this is a, good, a great reference document because here we can see all the different transaction types. These ultimately are exposed as methods. And then, you know, so here, this is to process a credit card uh, authorization or a credit card sale. You can see the fields that, that, the, that are required. Oh, another thing I did, every single method, make sure that the required fields are there. And if you don't pass um, the required field in, it'll tell you right away. Um, you know, I don't, have enough, I don't have enough information. You'll see that as you actually code it. So um, I'm really careful about that. So um, this is about a 115-page document right here. If I may, I have two quick questions. Uh, first one, um, I just got back from Europe a little while ago and was told there that uh, the chip cards are now coming everywhere. Um, is this possible to be integrated with some kind of chip reader um, if, if you physically have the card? And the second question, I'd like to understand the pricing or the cost behind all of this a little because I'm already paying so many different people in the credit card processing. <laughs> Placing your dollar. I used a mic. Yeah. Very good. So uh, first on chip card. So refer to it as EMV. And yes. Is that on? All the way? We're good. We're good? Okay. That's better. Um, so EMV is the chip card question. And yes, WorldPay was the first implement in Europe, and we are implementing here in the States. Uh, there are card readers today. So depending on the environment, the first question is what environment is cards being taken in? So we can talk. And, and discuss that specifically, but for the group. Um, we do have, um, if it's in a retail environment or if it's in an environment where uh, obviously a, a consumer has to be present to take the, hand you the card, then yes, we have um, pin, de pin devices today. We have a list of them that are AMV compliant to be able to operate. That, that plug into the device, into the mobile device? Um, so like the, an iPhone or an Android? Android? Yes. Android. So specifically for mobile in that scenario, um, there are not right now. So, so I'm going through my, my list in my head right now. So from an encryption perspective, check. From a uh, from a from an EMV perspective, um, I'll get back with a, with an answer to the group. And then then the on right. So um, so today I'm almost certain I don't have an EMV compliant card reader just yet, but I'll check with with Mark Crabtree and, and get back to that. And then secondly, on cost, we can go specifically um, to the situation around processing, right? So if when you're processing in the United States, US dollar, US dollar, we um, can put together a specific bid for your situation. Uh, but it's just the processing. So there, there's three components to it. This is a short answer, sorry. <laughs> the three components are interchange, um, assessments, and the profit to the processor, right? And so today you'll see rates like from Square and, and Stripe and Braintree and things like that, all phenomenal products. You'll see 2.9 and 30 and 2.9% 2 2 and 30 cents or 2.75% and 30 cents, those type of things. All that is, is taking all those fees and balling it up into one rate and giving it to you. Um, the way WorldPay uh, approaches that is we look specifically at the situation and we actually show you what the interchange is. So we don't... we. We don't hand you a bundled rate and say, trust me, which is okay, but we'll show you, here's your interchange, here's the assessments, and here's our profit, right? And so this is exactly what it is. And we, we do that on a per customer basis. So that's just a, uh, how we approach pricing. And then I can ask, I can answer more specific questions on a one-on-one -on -one basis if that's okay without hogging all your time, so. Yes, and we're between you and lunch, yeah. Oh, wait, there's one more? Well, you answer. Okay. Well, I, well I don't know if I can answer, but um, I wanted to show you the uh, IntelliSense that's built in to all of the methods, too. So as you go to, uh, say, call any of the methods, you'll see, oh, this is the required stuff that i got to pass on. Is this replacing the merchant bank, then, or the the authorized.net or the clearinghouse or all of it together? So, I 
I can talk real loud. Okay, there we go. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, that's okay. If you want, we can share this, and that way we don't make you do sprints. If that's sorry. <laughs> now I feel really bad. Hey, let me buy you lunch. No, no, Just I kidding. didn't get my exercise this morning. This is how I'm okay, getting it. Okay, very good. Um, so, um, I hate giving answers like on your specific, specific situation, but I can give you, here, here's uh, how WorldPay works. So, we, we'll replace the bank, right? So, so WorldPay is the acquirer. We, we are the acquirer and the processor. And so, example, merchant processes with Wells Fargo Bank, Wells Fargo Merchant Services, um, and they use authorized net. Today, we would replace Wells Fargo Bank, um, and if you want to stick with authorized net, we're not the gateway. We can process on authorized net. That's, so it wouldn't replace authorized net in that situation. We can also process on that gateway in that situation, if that helps. So that's kind of where WorldPay fits in that, in that process. Um, I have my personal opinion. Then we have our product person that would give us their opinion. WorldPay's opinion is not yet. My personal opinion is um, it's more secure than we think in, in a lot of scenarios. But again, if there's happy hour later, we can chat more. <laughs> you know, one of the things that's, uh, that's come out recently with uh, the new iPhone 6 is Apple Pay. And um, so I've read up quite a bit on this, and um, it looks to me like we can write the PhoneGap plugins that are needed to act as that interface between the providers and, and, um, and Apple Pay. So um, I think we're probably going to try that, you know. Um, and I've talked to the WorldPay guys about that, and, and they see uh, certainly an integration point there, too. So um, we're on top of that. And uh, and we're actually really excited about Apple Pay. We get free of 23,000 machines in North America. You know, so we have you know a fleet of 23,000 machines in North America, and we'd love to have somebody with a cell phone walk up and and you're done. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I'd like to leave my wallet at home too. You know, work with Adobe to make sure it's in built. Put some phone got built. We'll make it happen. Dan. We'll make it we happen. can make it happen. Well, Adobe's our friend. Does anybody else have any questions? Sorry, I'm, I'm giving away that I'm a little more on the desktop side than the website yet. But um, on the desktop side, it's usually fairly easy to communicate with all kinds of devices because you have a serial port, you have USB, you have drivers, you have an ActiveX or OCX or whatever, something that lets you talk to that. I'm always a little leery when it comes to web-based because inherently on a desktop with a browser, you are locked into certain things. How would a web-based application or can a web-based application communicate with a yeah. card reader? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you've got, you know, you've got .NET under the under the hood here. Oh yeah. So, but I mean, we've got all the horsepower is all built into this product. It's all there. I mean, it's just, yeah. Well. No, if you make a call, if you're in a browser and you do a callback. He's talking about to have the reader, the reader be, let's say you have a, a, a machine that's running oh, if and the, the reader's there, the server's somewhere else. I see what you're saying. So, um, readers so, often there's come in as, key, as keystrokes, in which case there's no problems if they interface That would be keyboard. a direct integ integration point with you guys. Yeah, yeah. So it, would be, it, would, it would be, thank you, I'll take it this time. Um, it would be um, a direct integration, exactly. So we've got the couple of variables is if you have, we, we have a virtual terminal we can hook in, um, a MagTech reader, an ID tech reader too, to be able to process transactions. Um, where it's, so it's, it's web-based, it's a virtual terminal, but actually you can, you can accept swipe transactions on it. So. Okay, pardon me if I missed uh, a point here. Um, I've done some integration with uh, Authorize.net in some other languages. Okay, I've written, use the SDK for Authorize.net, got everything going. Uh, the app works, it works great. And, you know, we do all our transactions, credit cards, debit, whatever we need to do. 
uh, and then the end user, uh, our client, has an account with Authorize.net. So I was confused when you said, oh, well, we use Authorize.net too. So uh, help me understand why you would be better. Do me your sales pitch here. I don't, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to understand okay. that. Absolutely. So um, can you guys hear me? Okay. So we can do um, an opportunity for us to do, there's three options. Um, and so it's, it's, so it's the good news is it's not a sales pitch per se. It's, you know, pick the best option for you, um, which is kind of a sales pitch. But so the first one is you currently, uh, the merchant currently has an account with AuthorizeNet. What we do is we just replace the merchant ID and terminal ID with ours. So we take Wells Fargo's merchant ID and terminal ID out of that. We plug ours in. They keep paying AuthorizeNet the 30 bucks a month and five cents a transaction, whatever they signed up for. And then they process on us. Option number one, right? Option number two is they say, hey, you know what? Um, we don't want to pay the 30 bucks and the $5. We'd rather process with WorldPay. So through the WorldPay Link Gateway, we've got an authorized.net emulator, which basically allows us to say, hey, you know what? Um, you can process everything that you did, but you just don't have to pay the merchant. You don't have to pay the $30 and the five cents transaction. It's actually free. So you process with us. Um, we insert a merchant ID and terminal ID into WorldPay Link Gateway, and then it plugs into an authorized.net .NET emulator, so it looks like exactly like what they've been processing with all along with authorized.net. And then really option number three is looking at it from, a, from um, their perspective in the sense that um, it, it can be, well, actually, let's we'll just go to those two options. So one is they keep what they've got, they insert our merchant ID and terminal ID, and option two is they go with our gateway, and we can emulate. So the stuff that she wrote is still going to work? Yes. Yes, exactly. Uh, yep. Exactly. Right. Right. That's correct. So, and then the third, I'm sorry, well, I guess there could be a third option. The third option is, um, Caffeine's plugging in late, sorry. The third option is um, they just go with WorldPay Link Gateway and they ditch AuthorizeNet, which would not be good for you. But yes, they could do that as a third option. Thank you. Okay. Oh, one more. Is there, is there what? Early termination fee, do you ask? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I can run halfway too if you want. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like walking around. Okay. I just, I just like just for this. Okay, good. So um, early termination fee. So merchant by merchant. So the way national accounts works uh, is that we do a couple of things. So uh, merchants have an opportunity to choose the term of agreement, and then based on the term of agreement they choose, then the early termination fee shifts. Um, and so and we can kind of talk about specifics. So there's a three-year agreement or five-year agreement, and then we base the early termination fee off of, um, of what the term is, what the volume is, things like that. So it's, you know, I can, if we talk one-on-one, -on -one, I can tell you exactly what it is, but it's kind of hard to give specifics. 